which is very concerning. I have one more question. Sure. Do you think that Governor Tim Waltz needs to apologize to the people of Minneapolis after he let that city burn? Absolutely, he should. Like, you're the man in charge. Like, you're in charge. I mean, look, everybody gets to have their political viewpoints. I'm not going to take away from Tim Waltz's political views. I disagree with them. I think they're very radical, but he's entitled to them. But when it talks about taking care of the people who are under your care as a governor of a state, you have a responsibility to put that stuff aside and do what's necessary for the people under your care. So he should apologize to him. Yes, sir. Uh, Congressman, thanks for being here today. Rich Zioli from Talk Radio 1210 to PhD in Philadelphia. All right. One of those prosecutors that we talked about earlier mm. will allow crime to go up uh, tremendously in our city. I want to talk about uh, food deserts, though, particularly in sure. black neighborhoods, poor sure. neighborhoods, because how much do you think Kamala Harris's price aging controls are going to lead to scarcity, grocery stores closing, and um, make it harder on these poor communities to be able to get fresh food? Oh, it would be devastating for, for poor families, for poor communities. Look, when you engage in price controls, the first thing that just starts up is you have a shrinking supply. That's the first thing that occurs. And so when you – I'm going to take my political hat off. I'm going to talk business for a moment, okay? When you're dealing with um, storefronts who have various levels of profit margins – the stores that typically struggle the most typically are inner city stores. They typically have the lowest profit margins because they typically sell the, they don't sell the high end um, uh, merchandise. They typically do not because the community, the target market of that store doesn't have the money to buy higher end products. Higher end products will give you larger uh, profit margins. So if you have price controls, which shrinks supply, for a store where they already aren't selling high dollar mar high dollar merchandise because the people in that community can't afford it, what happens? That store closes. That's what's going to happen. Then you have poor people having to transport themselves to another community to go get food in this particular case because she wants to have price controls over food. That's what's going to occur. You're going to see these these smaller. You're going to see these these restaurant these supermarket chains. Excuse me. And poor communities will shut down at an even more rapid pace than they have already been shutting down. The other people that it hurts are, are, uh, are non-corporate farmers, black farmers, white farmers. They have 10 acres, 20 acres, 30 acres. And they're just doing whatever they can to make ends meet on their own farm. And they do a great job. But they don't have the volume of crops to be able to withstand the price pressures from Kamala Harris. So what happens? Their land goes out of production. They might have to switch to growing something else, which isn't, which isn't your, your basic food stock that goes into any supermarket around the country. So it hurts those farmers who are non-corporate farmers. It hurts inner cities and, and low socioeconomic areas because they're not buying the high-end products to keep those stores open. So, like, look, if you're rich, yeah, you'll still get food. Because you buy other products, so your stores will remain open. There'll be a pipeline for you. But if you're poor, yeah, yeah, you're going to have bigger food deserts. You're not going to get the, the basic items that you need to survive. That's how dangerous a policy that is. And that's, that's not me talking as a member of Congress. That's me talking as a guy who worked in finance for 17 years. And that's me talking as a guy who understands the economic history of price gouging. Controls, price, uh, price gouging controls, etc. Let me talk quickly about the actual gouging. The only way true price gouging actually occurs is if somebody has a dominant market share, like 60, 70, 80 percent, or they have a dominant, um, they have a dominant area control, meaning they're the only game in town for like 30 miles. Then you get to gouge. But every state in the country has price gouging laws. Florida has price gouging laws. So what she's trying to do is cover up for the fact that it is her vote in the U.S. Senate that unleashed the greatest inflation in our country in over 40 years. Kamala Harris did that with her vote. And to expound upon that, the reason why I know this is because in the Budget Committee back in 2021, right before the American Rescue Plan went to the floor, it was a budget reconciliation bill that came through the Budget Committee. Shalanda Young, the OMB director for the Biden-Harris White House, came into the Budget Committee. In the Budget Committee, we were examining the American Rescue Plan, and we told Shalanda Young that this plan was going to cause inflation. 
because you're going to pay people to stay home. And when people are paid to stay home, there's not enough workers in the economy. And when that occurs, there's not enough people providing goods and services into the economy. So you have lower supply, but everybody was paid to stay home. So lower supply, but everybody has money. What's going to happen? Prices are going to go up. What happened? Prices went up. Kamala Harris did this to the American people. And now she comes out with a ridiculous economic policy that has failed everywhere it's tried. Yes, sir.